This is the meeting of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. Uh, we're meeting on Tuesday evening, uh, January 23rd. Uh, just for anybody who's watching this after the fact, um, we started the recording a little bit late, so we just want to catch you up to speed on what you missed off recording. Um, there were three agenda items we've talked about so far. First one was merely um, a reminder for folks who have yet to sign the handbook acknowledgement to make sure that they do so and get that into either me or town hall. Uh, the second was approval of minutes, and we don't have any minutes to approve this evening. So that was a pretty quick discussion item. And the third one had to do with an update about the University of Massachusetts project. Um, so Tony Maroulis just reported to us that uh, we do have a written proposal. Um, he is in possession of that from the architecture and LARP, uh, landscape architecture group um, over at the university. They're pretty excited about uh, working on the proposal, which would be a visioning, again, just an exploration, nothing concrete, nothing planned, um, but an exercise to imagine what the Hampshire Mall property uh, might look like um, if uh, different development were to take place on that site. So that's the student exercise that we're going to be engaged with uh, the university on, and that um, needs to come officially to our committee for review, um, which will happen at our next meeting. And then ultimately it does need to be approved by the chancellor of the university as well. So that is the recap of what was not recorded previously. Okay. Um, and so the next agenda item, um, for the, uh, probably the most important one for this evening is the planned housing forum. So we have been able to secure two dates uh, the first one and the one for the actual presentation will be February 29th. And yes, that is the 29th. It's a leap year, which I don't think anybody really thought about until we were talking about that date. Um, so February 29th would be the formal presentation. And the plan that we talked about was to have a two part so that people could hear and digest the information presented. Again, it's an educational forum about housing in Hadley. Um, and then it would be followed with a question and answer session the following week. And that date would be March 7th um, to <clears throat> encourage as much participation as possible. Um, it will be a hybrid meeting to be held at the Hadley Senior Center. So you can either attend the meeting or you can uh, watch it. Um, you know, we'll make sure that it gets filmed so that people can view it on on YouTube. Uh, again, to encourage as much participation as as possible. Um, so uh, Justin uh, did the lion's share of the work on the on the outline, and I think tonight what we wanted to do is kind of walk through, um, give everybody an update on who we've secured for the meeting, and then see. Uh, you know, it's time to really start filling in the blanks on the on the details of the presentation itself. Um, so I think the the biggest question right now has to do with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And Bill, I don't know if you've been able to touch base with Ken Comia or I've emailed him. I have not connected with him. Okay, um, is he aware of the of the dates at yes. least? Or yeah, I sent him the um, the revised outline and uh, the dates and asked if he was uh, able to participate on those dates. And I did offer to defray any expense out of the planning board uh, assistance contract. Okay. All right. That And that I think that was the big question is if we were going to run into any issue with um, hiring them. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure it won't be much. Uh, I'm sure it won't be much, but uh, I have to say that is subject to to the okay of the rest of the planning board. But uh, I think that's right right up the alley that he's working on. The only thing I would um, maybe suggest we tweak uh, because we have him in two different places. 
mm-hmm. at the beginning and part way through. And if there's a way to tweak it so that um, he doesn't have to, that he can do the pieces together and then depart if need be. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think. Um, Bill, um, <clears throat> sorry, the part that uh, we had. It was highlighted yellow in the revised one that we had slotted in the middle. Um, that was more because that section, I think, is just data heavy and he has all that data. But if he can share that with us so that we can you know, prep that information, I don't think he needs to necessarily present it. We just didn't want to you know, grab information off the Internet and not know that it was correct or mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't vetted. Um, so do we want to pull up the outline then? Um, I've got a hard copy that's marked up. Justin, do you have the cleanest copy? I do. Let's Hang on see. a sec. Let me just tweak this. Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't know if that's sharing. Oh, no, it's not. Hold on. Is that working? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a Zoom aficionado. Um, so I think we distributed this to the group, but maybe for those who haven't seen it or hadn't read it yet, um, you know, the, the idea is still the same. The outline is still the same, but we did flesh out some of the content areas a little bit more. Really, we like we had talked about initially, we want each of the people presenting their, their pieces to really present their own information. We don't want to feed them the information, but we're trying to focus this because there's really a lot to squeeze into a very short amount of time well a long amount of time but short amount of time per section um so the first one was the one that bill had mentioned that uh bringing the pioneer valley planning commission in to introduce the forum more specifically to talk about the um the findings from the survey which is really what led to this there's recommendations in there from residents who took the survey that they would like more information about these topics so that's the hope there is that he can recap some of the work that they did, some of the findings and results, and then um, sort of lead us into part two, which um, hasn't really changed a whole lot. This one uh, is really just recap of the town forum that we had about um, town government and procedures. So Molly agreed to present that information. And again, this is just a short seven minute recap. Um, And then Bill, we had talked about having you uh, speak to the planning board um, specifically, you know, what is the purview of the planning board, the overview of how it functions and um, some of the, the, not necessarily the nuances of zoning, but just kind of a high level overview of our zoning in town, um, just so that there's some context for the topics that we get into for the bulk of the presentation. And then this is the bulk of it. Um, I forgot to highlight Ken here. So um, we wanted to kind of highlight the master plan and um, there's a lot of information here. I won't read every piece of it, but the idea being, you know, the master plan kind of highlighted some of the priorities in town, such as preserving agricultural land, preserving open space, things like that. We want to make sure that the the findings of the master plan or the priorities of the master plan are clear. Um, I believe Molly, you said uh, Andy McKenzie is confirmed to present on the school system and enrollment, like foundation enrollment versus choice uh, is that, is that correct? She's confirmed yep. the dates. Um, she has the dates. The only thing she asked is that I believe um, the only way she can participate is remotely. So she said, as long as we're fine with her doing it in a hybrid format. Um, and then she also asked, and I told her I'd you know bring it to the our committee's attention tonight too, just in case there's a different opinion. Um, but I mean, basically, I asked her to repeat. Uh, the information that pre- we she presented to us um, last fall. Uh, again, that kind of level, that information about the enrollment data, uh, enrollment trends, um, and highlighting the financial implications of what you know she refers to um, as the foundation enrollment versus the school choice enrollment. And so again, just to provide people with a little bit of education as to the true budgetary impacts, um, you know, of having quote unquote, Hadley, um, Hadley resident kids 
in the schools versus filling the seats with students from outside the district. That's so, right. I mean, does that make sense to everybody? I thought that presentation she did for us was great. Yes. Hey. Molly, where was the presentation? I, did I get a copy of that? Or was it in uh, person? Yeah, she did it verbally at um, a previous meeting. I believe oh. it was the October meeting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next was infrastructure and services, um, which I think is a fairly quick topic, but I, um, Molly, I believe you said the police chief and fire chief were confirmed. And then I think there were some storms at the time that we were reaching out. So we decided the DPW director had enough on his yeah, plate. Yeah, and so he's, he's confirmed as well. Okay, great. I will unhighlight mm -hmm. him. Um, the point of this one is really just to talk about, you know, the I think the most common thing that comes up when we talk about new developments is the sewer. There are obviously some plans in place to manage that with extra capacity in the Amherst system. And um, it's just important to understand, you know, what impacts new housing or new developments might have as a result of, uh, you know, fire and police services. So hearing their input or their opinions on some of those things would be helpful. Uh, I don't know if any, anybody has specific questions about this section. Okay, um, that moves us to the business and economic considerations. And this one is a bit above my head, but Mark, who I don't believe is here tonight, agreed to help talk to that. Uh, I think we slotted Pioneer Valley Planning Commission here just as a placeholder. I forgot to highlight it. Um, if Ken's not available to do the whole presentation, that's fine. Uh, but this one, the intent was to talk about, uh, I believe Mark had mentioned, there are some economic models that we can look at and discuss sort of how um, shifting tax bases between commercial tenants and um, uh, property taxes for residents and you know the relationship between those things. Um, it's kind of a lot of content here. Some of it might be a little dry, so we're going to hopefully be able to package this in a way that the general public will be able to understand and take some really meaningful information away about like, you know, what, what does new development mean in terms of uh, potentially additional revenue, but also maybe, you know, additional investments on infrastructure and, and whatnot. So um, hopefully that has some good info in it. Any questions or any suggestions on additional topics that we could add to that? All right. And then the final <clears throat> section was um, social and community considerations. And Mark uh, also agreed to present this and I offered to, to join him um, partly because as a mid thirties guy who just uh, three years ago found a house in Hadley and I had seen how hard it was and almost gave up trying to live here. Uh, figured I could discuss a little bit about my personal experience moving into Hadley and you know finding a house and then also um, we can talk about sort of some of the barriers that we're, we're hearing about from residents who might want to stay in town, but there isn't really enough um, uh, variety in the housing stock for them to downsize or, you know, move into senior facilities or, you know, whatever it may be. So um, this is intended to kind of talk about or to lead into, I think, you know, the, the sort of the future and what potential future developments could do to help support some of these things like young families moving into town or, you um, uh, seniors who might want to downsize but don't want to have to relocate out of town. And again, we had slotted Pioneer Valley in here just in case they had something to add, but we can always just process their information and present that. Uh, anything to add here? Okay. And then that leads to the second session, <clears throat> which is um, Molly and I kind of chatted about how we might manage this. I'm not sure that we have a firm strategy on it, but we're going to try to see if we can get questions submitted in advance so that we can you know, maybe just get rid of duplicates and try to make sure that we have enough time to answer all of the questions and then have potentially an open floor where residents can, uh, who are in person or on, on the virtual meeting can ask the questions that maybe hadn't been asked or uh, ask for more information on some of the answers that had been given. So what's your timeline for doing this? So I can you see this is the agenda for a full day seminar. Yeah. Yeah. So we did put some estimates um, starting at the top. The 
introduction, overview of town government, and um, planning board pieces would be seven minutes each. And then we allotted 60 minutes for the, you know, sort of what we call the bulk of the information. And I think that breaks down to about 10 to 12 minutes per section. So it's, it's going to be, I mean, we have to try and find a way to distill all of the information into, you know, the most important key points. That's part of what the strategy will be when we start sitting down to plan the, the actual content. And then the second session, I think, I forget what we had said, Molly, is that one an hour or an hour and a half? I think we're allowing for an hour and a half for both. <clears throat> um, I would imagine the second one won't last the full hour and a half, but you never know. That's what I thought I remembered, kind of like with our first discussion, having the two. So that way people can have the questions at the second one. Um, so that way it doesn't end up being like a three hour dissertation kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And I love the idea about trying to get the pre questions because I know um, in a previous forum that I was in, involved in what a challenge it was um, with being able to really guide that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can get off the rails quick. Um, so the hope is to try and, you know, we want to put up a little, uh, some guardrails just to make sure that we're focused on the intent here and we don't get, you know, we're not waxing philosophical or, you know, getting into territory that's, you know, more grievances. Uh, you know, the hope is that it's it's information and then answering questions and that people can come away from that with enough uh, information and education to make informed decisions should an issue come up for town vote in the future. All right, well, I'll stop sharing that. So I think the uh, the next um, logical step here, obviously, is to take that outline and turn it into the actual presentation, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, in terms of PowerPoint or whether we want to have any sort of fact sheets to hand out that night, although, you know, that won't help people who are um, Zooming in, but um you know we can we can break back down into our subgroups to make that happen i have a suggestion for a fact sheet is there any way we could put it like it for the people in zoom on a google drive and then put the link in the chat like as a pdf i think we could that sounds like a good idea yeah i'm just yep. trying to think mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask uh, Molly, a part that I don't know how we're going to accomplish. I mean, we have a month, right? It's not a very long time. Um, we have right. a lot of information and a lot of people who need to contribute to developing that information. So I was curious if, um, I'm not sure what the ins and outs of open meeting law are, but if we could have like a working session with the panelists so that we can sit down and talk through the content guideline or you know, the, you know, the guardrails that we talked about. Um, and then let them develop their own content. Uh, I think Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is probably the most important one to sit down with first, just because they have the most information to disseminate. Um, but I don't know if you can maybe help us understand what's required of us in terms of open meeting law and setting up a working session and maybe getting everybody around a table to work through it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a work group. So as long as... Um, you know, it's a, not a decision making body per se, and and you're not, um, and it doesn't represent a, a quorum of a particular committee subject to open meeting law. It's, it's fine to do that sort of thing. Um, I would imagine, you know, logistically, um, I think we'd be lucky, and I'll lean on, on Bill on this one, to be able to just have a conversation uh, with Ken over the phone and kind of talk through it, um, or a quick Zoom meeting. You know, Bill, do you think that's something we could try to work yeah. out? I think a, a lot of what he's doing would be kind of rip and read from information he already presented from the housing production plan. Like that piece of it's easy. I think the question is um, that more meaty section. Okay, well, we can certainly, I can set up an infinite number of uh, Zoom meetings, so that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, um, 
yeah, I mean, I think it would be a, a good idea to try to do that. I wonder if we could do that um, fine time, maybe next next week or something to try to coordinate. And then the same thing with um, Mark, I think, uh, you know, we talked about he's going to have a fair number of data points that he's going to be pulling in. So find out how, you know, he's going to be able to accomplish that. We had talked about him reaching out to the Collins Center and places that maybe already have some of that data available. Um, and then the department heads, like I said, yeah, I think Annie's pretty much good to go. Um, and we can touch base with the other the other three department heads. Uh, just based on recent experience trying to get multiple people onto a coordinating call, um, seems to be virtually impossible these days. So, you know, if we can break it up and everybody's comfortable with that, I think that's fine. And then my, my hope would be that once we have an actual uh, kind of presentation, even if it's not in fully final form, that we would bring it back to this committee to say, yeah, you know, we're, we're comfortable with this content um, in advance of the meeting. Yeah, that's where the timeline gets really tight. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think if we can prioritize, I mean, at the very least, getting some time with Ken next week, that would be a huge help, even if he just spends 20 minutes talking and then emails all the information, at least then we can start building those slides and get a draft together. Um, <clears throat> and then, Molly, I don't know if you want to circulate the revised agenda to the various panelists and ask them to review the sort of expanded scope of their sections and then you know, if they have any concerns or comments or, you know, they would like to, you know, work in a different format or like shuffle it around. Like, I want to make sure that they know that they have the license to craft their portion as they see fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We can communicate that with them for sure. Justin, am I able to get a copy of the paperwork that you were just reading from? Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I did make, I mean, they're not really edits. I highlighted some stuff. So I'll make a save as of this and then send it out to the um, email group. So everybody should have a copy. Thank you. Thank you. So as far as any other new developments, we've discussed everything so far with whatever's coming forefront in terms of being built now, as far as the um, housing for the elderly and um, I don't want to say homeless, but that project. Has that been completed as far as us discussing it? Are you talking about the Econo Lodge, Crystal? Yes, Econo Lodge, excuse me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's actually um, next agenda item is just uh, any updates on that. So so just are we all set then with the next steps on, on the housing form? And and you did say some of the people on the, on the committee can be part of that forum, correct? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm hoping hoping that as many of us can be there or are there. Yeah, for sure. I would definitely like to be there again because of my connections with the DEI. Sure. Um, we can also relate information and and see what that um, conversation would be like on the other end. Mm hmm Yep, for sure. Okay. All right. So that's uh that's that's where we're at. Um and uh and I do have wanna to say too that um for the department heads, you know, between uh Annie and the the chiefs and Scott, you know, they didn't even blink. They were more than happy to to participate in this, um, which was nice. I mean, they were like, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to talk about this stuff. So um, that's good. Okay. Um, yeah. So affordable housing. So uh, I'm not really sure how much more of an update there is. I think at our last meeting, um, we were aware of the fact that the um, the article ran in the Gazette, making people aware of the fact that the uh, town is not pursuing uh, litigation. And as a result of that, that the 
um, housing court found in favor of uh, Valley CDC relative to the use of the Econolodge pro project. So uh, I don't think anything is going to happen imminently there. Uh, my understanding is at the moment, I believe it's rented out to Craig's doors um, for their use. And, uh, you know, they have some sort of an arrangement with them. Um, and I don't quote me on these dates, but I, I believe what we heard from Valley CDC was in all likelihood, we're not really going to see any movement on that project in a meaningful way until probably 2025, you know, at this point where um, we might actually see people moving in. Bill, does that sound right to That's, you? That seems about right. I saw in the uh, Gazette that they did get a uh, a grant for the uh, former nursing home project on Bridge Road that they're working mm -hmm. on. Um, <clears throat> nothing about the Econolodge per se. So I'm assuming that's that they're working on the financing piece for that. And it'll, but meanwhile, they're committed to Craig's door probably for the rest of the uh, rest of the cold season. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, that um, bridge road, the old Northampton nursing home. I mean, that, I think that's going to be a lot of units. So, so I'm sure. Where's that located? Them. Uh, Crystal, it's in Northampton. So um, Bridge Road is the road. If you went over the rotary and took a right onto Damon Road in Northampton, right. and then you cross over King Street and keep going straight. Right. Uh, if you just continue up that way, not I mean, maybe about a, a mile on the, on the left-hand side is the old Northampton nursing home. Just hmm. before the cemetery. Oh, yeah. before the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Before the cemetery, before Meadowbrook. And they're they're going to build housing there. It's an existing structure. Um right. so it was an old nursing home, but my gosh, that's been mothballed for mm. 15, 15 years. years. Yeah. It's been that long. It it's been yeah. since I moved back. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And they're yeah. going to make it into apartments. I'm yes. not familiar that to affordable. Yep. And is it one bedroom, two bedroom? How's that going? What is it? I think it's a know? combination of one bedroom and studios, maybe a few two bedrooms. I'm not exactly sure. And that project has not started yet, correct? No, they're in the financing phase right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty then. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So I think to, to Bill's point, you know, I'm not sure how much capacity they have to handle multiple projects. Um, so, we'll, you know, we'll see what the timing is then. Um, right. I also found out, I spoke with someone, she came to the library one day and she had a whole car, carload of things. And she said she was homeless, but she was staying at the Econo Lodge. So I didn't know the Econo Lodge already housed homeless people. They uh, have an arrangement with Craig's Doors, which is the uh, homeless shelter, one of the homeless shelter options in Amherst. Uh, Craig's Doors used to run a, um, I forget which church it was behind, but they had some temporary buildings behind one of the churches on, I think, North Pleasant Street. Um, and uh, they would have a, they, they ran food service and they provided uh, a degree of housing. I don't know how many people they could uh, host at any one time, mm -hmm. but they now have, I think they at one point may have had an arrangement with the Knights Inn, which mm -hmm. is now housing migrant mm -hmm. families. And um, then uh, more, most recently, um, Valley CDC made an arrangement with them to make temporary use of a condo lodge. So okay. I don't know how many rooms are occupied. Um, I don't know how many rooms they're occupied. I'm not sure what their arrangements are. I believe it is not permanent housing so that yeah. people can shelter there overnight and there's some obligation to be out of off the premises for some part of the day. 
Okay. But I don't know any details beyond that. All right. Yeah, that, that had my curiosity peaked because I was wondering if they're already going to do that. Are they already doing it now? But you've you've clarified a whole lot, Bill. Thank you. So we uh, planning board did uh, apply to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for a grant to um, uh, study a 40R smart, smart housing zoning district uh, that would be at the moment, I think at the consensus is it will either be the uh, the Hampshire Mall property, maybe as far as the Howard Johnson's or the Mountain Farms Mall property, including the Econo Lodge, or maybe a combination of both. Um, mm -hmm. And this is just to study it, to fine tune what the operative regulations would look like in anticipation of perhaps bringing this to the uh, May 2025 annual town meeting. Okay, yeah. So there's a ways off for this. Yes, that, that will not be uh, anything that we're going to be seeing in the immediate future. But the one in Northampton may be sooner. That seems to have a green light and financing. Okay. Um, what they find when they start breaking ground and who knows? Who's, that can be another holdover. You never know what you find when you start digging. It's always something good, I tell you. Okay, and then um, the only other thing I was thinking about related to affordable housing is, um, Bill, I had sent a message to you and, and the affordable housing trust trustees haven't met in a while, um, but I think you were talking about the need for a, even a, you know, an administrative meeting at some point. Um, yeah, there should be a need for an administrative meeting, but I, there's, that is a group that consists of um, the planning board and you. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not something that we need to rope in to provide further background to the, their informed at this point. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Was a strategy. That there was a strategy to that, by the way, maybe I should explain the, uh, when the affordable housing trust fund was first created, it was an initiative of the planning board to create the affordable housing trust fund. And since we, uh, the, the five members of the planning board had been the, at, at that time, probably the only ones who have been actively talking about affordable housing for a couple of years already, the uh, thought process was that why don't we make the planning board plus a representative of the select board, which is a statutory requirement, the initial trustees. So, um, it would be a group of people who are already somewhat up to speed on, on what was involved. Um, it is uh, appointed by the select board. So going forward, there will certainly be an opportunity to, I, I forget exactly how many members were, supposed, were authorized to have, but there certainly is an opportunity to reach out further, but it just seemed at the outset, it made sense to, uh, people, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund with folks who had basic understanding of the, the concepts involved. Okay. And there hasn't been any um, activity relative to adding to that trust fund, correct? No, there, well, there has been a little bit. We, um, we do have a source of income from uh, development of East Street Commons. So as units sell in East Street Commons, uh, a, a portion of the proceeds from each sale comes to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, it has been slow because the, they just haven't been selling there uh, or they're, 
they're sold, but they're all under construction. So it's um, it's a slow process to get completion on it. How many, do you know how many units are left on that property? I know one I, just transacted recently. I don't, I would say uh, maybe up to four. Oh, okay. Maybe five, somewhere in that range. No. It's substantially complete. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Um, our next scheduled meeting would be, I believe, February 22nd. And then the week after, we have the um, housing forum. So, uh, Maybe what we could do is, you know, obviously we'll try to circulate whatever draft we have for the forum ahead of time. Um, but then we would want to, you know, get get sign off um, at that next meeting. If you would like to schedule an interim meeting, that would be perhaps a good idea. I have yeah, it I down as February 15th. Was that rescheduled? Oh, is it the 15th? Yeah, because the first is uh, the first Thursday. Ah. That's, that's what I have, Sean, too. Oh, yeah, that's what I have, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't read my own calendar. Thank you, Sean. Okay, yeah, so that actually is better. So that's the 15th is the third Thursday, so that would be our next scheduled meeting. Um, and I suspect we're going to need that time to, to put something together. Okay, then that way, if we have to do anything in between, you know, we, we can always schedule a, an interim meeting um, prior to the 29th if we need to. I thought I had a few more questions. I'm trying to remember as I didn't get a chance to write them down. Um, I don't know. Maybe you'll come to me before the whole meeting is is over. Well, you're running out of real estate, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have anything else to talk about today? All right. Whatever I remember, I'll just bring to you, Molly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can shoot out an email, Crystal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, thanks everybody for taking the time and um, may the force be with us to get this presentation together and hopefully all the, the planets line up right. Keep sending positive vibes to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. That's right. We all yeah. hold hands and we yeah. send it out. There we go. <laughs> okay. And thanks, Tony, for um, sending whatever you have along, and we'll get that out to the committee. Now, before I shut down, um, I just want to remind everybody that Sean uh, posted a uh, clip from the Craig Store website in the chat. So if you want to uh, read that or copy it, um, please do. And then <clears throat> Unfortunately, with the chat, when I when I end the meeting, it disappears. But it is at the Craig's Door website as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Sean. Okay. And uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. So moved. Okay. All in second. favor. Okay. Good night, all.